Wow. Hello, and welcome to Flicks in a Six. I'm one of your hosts, Anthony Costanza, with me forever and always, the man, the myth, the muscle-bound whack job, <laughs> Alessandro Bailsi. Say hello, Al. Hello. Our flick for this week's episode is going to be uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. We'll get into that in just a little bit, but first, Al, what are we drinking? Uh, we are drinking the Assa Woman, you heard that correctly, uh, Transporter Robust Porter. So, before uh, any of your prudes get upset, um, it's not Ass Woman. <laughs> it's Ass a Woman, which is the name of Ass a Woman Bay. Which this, is, this is a place? Yes. What? It's the name of the bay where um, Ocean City is. That little strip of land that is Ocean City off of Maryland. Um, the name of the bay between that spit of land that Ocean City is on and the mainland is called Ass a Woman Bay. It's, I think, the name of a Native American tribe from that area from huh. way back. Ass a woman. Yeah, I was very confused by that as well until I saw the sign with a and little. It opened bit of... up your eyes. <laughs> yes, the uh, there. Ass a woman opened up my eyes. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that picture on the back. You um, you see that um, the little picture on the back there. So this I'm one not... has a little. Uh, well, I guess I'm, I'm no boat expert, but it's some sort of old old wooden <laughs> ship. <laughs> <laughs> the boat on this bottle is diversity. Uh, yes, there's a <laughs> diversity. Uh, is that a Schooner? Or also, a, I'm pretty sure by saying boat, we're discrediting it somehow. I feel like that's just like a... It's all yeah. yeah. Almost certainly correctly. If any of you are ship experts, you'll probably... Have Write us that. and let us know how horribly we've messed up already. <laughs> um, so, uh... On this day so early. Yeah, have, let, no, you know what? I'm starting with a question. One, okay. why was this beer half full? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I was going to get to that part of it a little after. No. We can do it now. We can do it now. <laughs> So I get to the table and this beer is sitting in front of my computer, and it is a typical beer bottle. However, the twelve beer ounce beer bottle is only going up. There to was like about ten ounces of it, like an inch lower than where the neck starts. Yeah, so um, I feel like I'm getting gypped. That's what they call a short fill in the okay. biz, as it were. Ugh. Get out! Who was... invited you? <laughs> you. Oh, <laughs> that's my bad. Although, you know, I did walk into the house last night. You did. Without knocking Uninvited! Door. Yes! There was supposedly a party. <laughs> Which I wasn't They heard you to. were coming. Oh. So ends. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we had a good, like, ten episode run or something like that. Well, this is, like, a very small piece of the tenth episode. <laughs> I was gonna, I really want to taste this, so let's cheers. Because okay, we didn't do that yet. No, I'll get back to my story. It's robust. Yes. It is a robust <laughs> porter. So, um, last summer I went down to Delaware with the fam for, uh... Hi. I'm in Delaware. Wayne's World. Oh, you don't know. <laughs> Dude, I was two when that movie came out. Admittedly, you were like four or five, but still. That's right. <laughs> it's upsetting to I, me. I didn't, I didn't really watch a lot of Saturday Night Live either. That's like, so. Um... So anyway, uh, we got one person left. Yes, and honestly, that's 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 the bar. That's what I'm going for. So as long as I got one chuckle. So um, we have family friends of ours who we knew from Vermont when we lived up there. Who moved to Delaware um, a couple years ago? I guess I was a nomad. Vermont, New York, <laughs> twice. Um. Anyway. <laughs> Um, so, um, there, so when we were down there, me and Dominic went to, that's my brother Dominic, we went to, um, the Dogfish Head Brewery. You might recognize him from the Peanut Gallery yes, he was our, our episode. <laughs> he was our Peanut Gallery and why him, for those of you who listened, um, and provider of our beer that episode. Um, so we went to the Dogfish Head Brewery, did the tour and everything, really cool. And, um, when we came back, uh, parents and sister were... With our friends, um, and when we got there, they're like, oh, if you're really into beer and stuff, um, walk next door. Our neighbor is the head brewer at this brewery in Ocean City. So I was like, sure, why not? So I went over, talked to him for a while, and he said, hey, if you got some time, come down to the brewery. And, um, you know, it's like an hour south of here. And um, I'll show you around, you know, talk, whatever, this and that. And he's like, I have a bunch of beers here. He goes, they're like just ready to drink now. He goes, they were 
he goes, these are like like a new batch. and mm-hmm. It's quality control type stuff. So these are the short fills. That's where I got the word from. I didn't come up with it. And he is the definition of being in the biz. He's been, he worked at Dogfish stop, many years stop ago. Stop saying the biz. The business. It makes me cringe. The trade? The trade? Is the trade better? The industry. Trade, I think, is in the trade? okay with the trade. Okay. Or business. The whole word. Well, that's too many syllables. Trade is one syllable. Biz is one syllable. So pick one. Trade. Okay, trade. One <laughs> always <laughs> trade. Um, so anyway, he's in the trade, and uh, he gave. He said, "You don't even like." No, that I one. was thinking about biz again. <laughs> <laughs> no, so he uh, he goes, yeah. So like, we have an automatic uh, fill machine that, um, as opposed to like hand filling, because mm. you know its bottles are selling out commercially. That's not what they're going to do. It just automatically does them, and if there's ever any sort of malfunction, it doesn't pour the full twelve ounces. They pull them off the line, so you don't get gypped. So he brought them all. He just pulls them out because they, they can't open them and rebottle them. You right. know what I mean? So he's like, I want to give you a bunch of beer. He goes, I have a ton of these. He goes, he just gave me a bunch of them. So oh. Free beer. I'm not going to turn them down. Yeah. Who cares if it's 10 ounces? I didn't pay for it. Right. So that's why you had a not quite full Got it. beer bottle. Interesting. Um, so that's a... History lesson. Yeah. It's, uh, this, of this beer. It wasn't a long beer. history lesson. <laughs> um, which, unfortunately, it's been relegated to history because as I was trying to give like kind of proper attribution. I looked up before here and I didn't realize it's been a few months since I talked to uh, Jason... Uh, it's Jason Weisberg is the was the head brewer, and I just found out that uh, late last year they uh, closed down, um, which is too bad because um, in a future episode we will be drinking another one of their beers, um, and there won't be any more coming, which mm. is too bad because both this is really good. Both That's these beers are really really good, yeah. um, and I had a couple of the other ones when I was over there, um, and he's really, I would say he's a really good dude, so like I, I feel bad. This gets up my this beer is good. Rating. Um, it is unfortunate that as I'm listening to this, you might not, you probably can't get it. No, I don't think I can. No, I, I don't know. I'm sure that it's been five months or something like that since they closed. I, I, I doubt that there's any still lingering around. Maybe Great. dusty somewhere in Maryland. But Great White Buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> That's an inside joke of an inside joke. None of you are going to get that at all. <laughs> One person that saw Hot Top Time Machine will get it. One person saw Hot But even like the specifically like us talking yeah. about it this yeah. morning. It came up today. Um, so I'll give you guys, um, as it's swan song, I'll give you a little bit of uh, information on this beer. It's an award-winning... Sorry, in my head right now, I'm wondering what a swan song actually sounds like. <laughs> and it's just... If, yeah, right, right? <laughs> like if something was like going, like, uh, we're sending it off, and you just like hear that, and you're like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> this is a thing? Mah! This is a thing that everyone knows? <laughs> yeah. uh, so it's an award-winning English-style robust porter. The transporter... Sets its sail in case you can get a transporter. Transporter. The transporter sets its sail. <laughs> you say it until I say something back yeah. to you. Yeah. Well, because usually that's when you hit me with. Can't you feel me looking right <laughs> through you? <laughs> Do you feel me, Brian? <laughs> <laughs> the transporter sets its sail to the dark seas with an intense aroma and smooth finish. Let its hints of vanilla, caramel, and roasted malt transport you to the relaxing part of a long day. <laughs> I was going to give you the left eye rocket wink We'll nice. get to that later <laughs> Relaxing part of a long day Accompany you for a celebratory meal Or anything else in between Celebratory meal I don't know that I want this with food I want to just drink it It's a great drink On it's own Delicious I wish I had A whole one <laughs> <laughs> You know if I had turn, If I had turned my back <laughs> Poured it Put it in front of you You never would have known 100% <laughs> Because we drink out of a glass that's too big for the bottle anyway. Sure. So well, it's got to accommodate us for like a full pint because we do that sometimes. Mm-hmm, too. Mm-hmm. Um, but like I said, oh, overall, sorry. I uh, I approve. I approve this beer. Yeah, I figured. I know you like uh, like dark beers, porters, and stuff, stuff like that, right? Yeah. Um, I forgot uh, one note: alcohol by volume, five point five percent. What are your thoughts on it? You good? Oh, I really like it. Um, Did you have it beforehand? Yeah, I have. Had you it. jerk! You monster! Uh, I, I We're getting into the territory where we have to dip into stuff that you've already had. Well, not really. It's just that I knew you. I knew it was winding down. <laughs> I knew you hadn't had it. Got it. And I had yeah. it on hand, and I figured this would be a good one for this. Um, we have to do a show with Brian of the Spoon Tune at some point, and we'll just drink Guinness. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay. So with that, let's start getting into the uh, the flick for this week. Um, this is one that we've been anticipating for quite some time. Yes, anticipation, which we know a lot about here. Guardians of the Switcher. Galaxy. Volume 2. Volume 2. Which, kind of cool, you know, um, before we get to what we were going to mm-hmm. get to. Um, similar 
I think a little it stands on its own better but uh, similar kind of to the whole John Wick chapter 2 thing right where it's kind of a continuation a direct continuation of the story yeah I could see that the, there, event, but... the events were set in motion very much by the last one you know what I mean yeah that's true that's true I feel like more time passed between these two movies than those two movies but see they conveniently didn't really let you know that I guess not. Um, if I, the only thing I feel like that you have to go off of is that uh, Baby Groot has no, is no longer in a plant. Is no like, longer. Uh, he's not in a planner. Can now walk he's, and yeah. talk? Yeah. I'm I wondering what sort of time jump... Well, we'll get to that later. But yeah. Uh, how, what, t- for the teenage, next one? Teenage Groot? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. So, I loved it. I'm not surprised at all. I, I was surprised when I saw the first movie and loved yes. it. Because I had no, I didn't have big expectations going into that one. I was worried my expectations for this one would hurt this movie. Right. But I think on its own, on the merits it stood, I really enjoyed this. Yeah. Um, Same. Solid, solid flick. James Gunn is killing it. He's doing work. Yeah. He's doing real work. Get it done. Um, but before we get into the heart of the movie, let's talk. Yeah. About, let, let, let's do uh, in so classic movie tradition. This, yeah. This is our. This is the movie that we saw together for our uh, our recording session. Um, so we saw that this morning. And we're actually going to kick this episode off talking about the trailers. Yes. Pretty big trailer game. Yeah. Or preview game, coming attraction. Trailers lost all meaning because it's not doesn't come after the movie anymore. Who originally put them after the movie? Terrible idea. Yes, <laughs> Why did you do that? Um, but, anywho, we started off with... Star Wars. We were running, like, just a touch late, but we, we missed, luckily, like, we saw the, this. like, literally five seconds. Yeah, if, imagine that was, like, the first time we were seeing the trailer, I would have flipped. <laughs> Why did the ice take so long this morning? You heard of this thing? <laughs> <laughs> the internet? You heard of this thing called the internet? <laughs> yeah, that's where I was going. <laughs> but, uh, obviously, you know, Last Jedi trailer. I was gonna say Return of the Jedi trailer. Not what it was. No, no. Not what it was. No, it was not. Uh, Last Jedi trailer. We talked about that, I think, at Why length. Him? Last, last episode? Yeah, we talked about it pretty healthily yeah. in YM. But, so, that one was obviously a plus. What followed that up? Um, I didn't I didn't really care whether we did them in order I think or not. Ragnarok came next. I forgot that that was in there, yes. Oh, yeah, it was next. Right. Um, also... Because got the Disney properties out of the way. Right, which also great. Also old trailer, yeah. but one we enjoyed. Yeah, I leaned over that was like, I don't think I've been this excited to see a Thor movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah you said that, and I said, that's a fact. Yeah. I have never been <laughs> as excited. The right. first two, the first one, I was a little excited. The second one, not that excited. Um, both of them I saw well after they were out of the theater, so... Okay. Um, and it was even more egregious with The Dark World. Oh, like, you saw it a real long time afterwards? Yeah. Oh. Like, I saw it on, like, I don't think Showtime I, or something. The only, the only Marvel months, movie... Months later, a year later. I've missed in theaters was Ant-Man. No, I've missed a few, unfortunately. Oh. That is unfortunate. I've seen them all, just not... Yeah, you gotta, you gotta get on it. Get on it. Well, now when I have to go alone <laughs> and depressed, I can just say I I have to go see this for Flicks and Six. I don't have to. It's work it. research. I, I'm doing homework for my show. <laughs> God, that was probably too much. It sounded, it sounded bad. That was um, probably too much. Moved on from there. Uh, well, no, hang, first. On, hang on a second because we did have a comment on that, right? With um, Ragnarok, uh, I made a comment. Um, and I was just trying to secretly um, take a look at this on my computer while you were talking there. <laughs> you I looked like you were under some pressure. Though. I definitely can't pronounce that fucking name. I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, <laughs> this is to the director. It's my favorite game. Ta- yeah, we've done this a few times. Taika Watiti hmm. uh, would be my best guess at how to pronounce That's it. That's the director of Ragnarok? Ragnarok, yes. What else is he, she directed? Let's find out. It's a guy. Okay. Figured with uh, the O, but... He's from New Zealand. Okay. Taika? Taika. T A T A I K A, T A. Okay. Um, he's done a whole bunch of things that I've never heard of. Oh, Hunt for the Wilder People, What We Do in the Shadows, The Captain, which was a short, Green Lantern. Huh. Did he, am I looking at the right thing? Please no. don't. Please don't be right. Those are, please don't be right. <laughs> those are acting credits. Oh, what? Who is this? <laughs> which is weird. Um. Okay, so I've heard of even less his uh, directing credits. Mm. John and Pogo, which was a short. Okay. Two, two Cars, One Night, a short. Heinous Crime, a short. What We Do in the Shadows, Interview with Some Vampires, a short. That's what it's called? Yes. That is awesome. Eagle, <laughs> Interview with Some Vampires. <laughs> Eagle vs. Shark. I have no information about that. He directed a few episodes of Flight of the Concords. Huh. He directed something called Boy. 
Okay. A uh, bunch of episodes of TV shows I've never heard of. Uh, from that list, though, is so is this his first big? This is literally unless Hunt for the Wilder People is something that actually mm. matters. Um, wow. Savage. Sam Neill was in it, but this is very much an indie movie. I'm excited for Ragnarok. Me too. Um, so yeah. So anyway, um, I've noticed not that I not trying to like in any way accuse him of um, ripping it off because it's not the same thing. But my first thought was that they were going for a particular aesthetic in this movie, and it reminded oh, me of yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Yeah. Not the same, although I do sense some similarities. The big, bold coloration and everything mm-hmm. like that, the cosmic scale. Oh, yeah. Um, well, you hit the nail on the head with the word cosmic, though. That's the whole point. Um, but it's more than that, though, because you can see, I think, that they're doing it tied in with some music as well. I don't know if it's going to be a the movie, bit. but the trailer yeah. is definitely meant to work with the yeah, music. I don't think the movie will be like that. But the, I don't think the, so either. Well, certainly trailer. not the whole awesome mix thing. Right. But um, um, although they've had branded music, uh, the, the Avengers movie had Soundgarden read a song for that movie. Oh, right? okay. I wasn't familiar. Um, the one that they played during the big montage, that was a song that... Like written specifically? Soundgarden about? wrote it for that. Oh, cool. Um, and performed it for that. Cool. I know um, so they might be doing something like that with this movie. But either way, that was something that I think that the other Thor movies were lacking in. Mm-hmm. Was a specific theme to go with. Yeah. Or a specific aesthetic to go with. It's That's just fair. I think kind of haphazard. They dipped their toe into it with the first Thor movie, but like the... So we I, talked I was, about the whole thing I, yeah, with how it, the second half looks like it's shot on the back lot. It, it's like, like it's like yeah, it's hard to it's like mm, I don't know how this is gonna play out. And then like okay, they starting to understand what they're doing. And then you get you know the second one, you get Guardians, you get Doctor Str- Doctor Strange, mm-hmm. you get Guardians two. Okay, they have a like this cohesive theme that they're going with this cosmic. But theme. it's specifically the the Thor movies that I I think had that issue. Like Ant yeah. Man definitely had his theme nailed down. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, I don't think it's a, it, a Avengers as a whole has had an issue with it. It's a Thor movie specifically. I think that's why those have performed the most poorly right. of the standalone. But as I think I'm, I'm hoping that this one surprises. Yes. Um, because it feels like it found its place. Like it, they start, it's like they started with it, but they didn't understand what to do with it. Yes. And now that they understand what to do with the theme, they're like, okay, all right, hang well, on. And hang you can on, see they're kind of this. they're laying into that '70s thing with like yeah. you know like the 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 way that the yeah. the, the the lettering mm-hmm. was and him wearing the. Valkyrie helmet, yeah. <laughs> and he's wearing the Valkyrie helmet when he's in the arena. Yeah, yeah. So very cool. Yeah, um, and you know, Jeff Goldblum is just solid gold. <laughs> see, I'm not a huge Jeff oh, Goldblum fan stop. overall. You love him. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> oh, that's I don't know where you're getting that's that from. Me. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Project, I I'm projecting. <laughs> I don't hate him. It's just uh, he's kind of just there. Yeah. Um, He's had his moments. I, he's so stupid. Dino, Dino, I love him. Dino droppings. Like. The, the, uh, that stupid apartments.com commercial where he draws so the snail. Bad. I love it. I love it. But his like ridiculous idiosyncrasies in Grand Budapest Hotel. Oh, yeah. I was Beautiful. entertained by him in that he, movie. Yeah. He, he was a perfect match for that film. Yeah. Um, we'll do that one day. We could do that as a good old movie. Yeah. I, I definitely would dig that, yeah. Um, so let's move to the next trailer. Yeah. Which was the Mummy. The Mummy, I think. Mm-hmm. So, my first thought, now that I've seen a couple of different trailers from them, and especially this one, because I hadn't seen that trailer before, actually. I've seen some of the other ones that right. they've released. Um, so, when they first announced they were doing a Mummy reboot, I wanted to throw something. Mm-hmm. Just didn't get it. Yeah. I really liked the first two. Yeah. I mean, they're kind of... I didn't watch the third one. They're kind of ridiculous. I saw it once. Oh, okay. Um, I've never seen it. It wasn't great. It was fine. It was whatever. Um, the first two were awesome, though. I love those movies. Yeah, I legitimately like both of them, even though they're like goofy and yeah. like. So the only reason I'm willing to watch this one is because they're not trying to do that again. Mm-hmm. That was like a horror action comedy. Yeah. This is a horror movie mm. with some big budget yeah. action. Well, isn't that the idea? They're trying to. They're doing like that whole. But yeah, but that's the point. Is like after watching like the trailer specifically we saw today, that's meant to be a horror movie. Mm-hmm. That's the only reason I'm going to be willing to watch it. Not even. I don't even necessarily love horror movies, but because right. they're doing something completely different. If they were going to just try and redo that, I, mean, I would have zero interest. If by completely different, you mean go back to the actual original, The Mummy. Yes, but with <laughs> modern day <laughs> graphics That's and modern, yeah, you know, okay. movie making. That's but fair. the point is like... They're not... Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. Real horror it's not. I, I'd, I'd be uh, careful with it being original, though. No, I, I get yeah. that. What I'm saying is... 
I, I I know what you're saying, but like we're not talking about the 1940s movie yeah. where it was a dude stumbling around. You know what I mean? Like this whole thing of him being this like actual god. You know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> My so I I see what you're saying there, and that that is enough reason to be excited about it. I'm not saying excited, just or willing interested. to be interested to see it. Uh, the 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 Tom Cruise factor. I don't hate Tom doesn't, Cruise. Doesn't I? I don't hate him either. But you, I just you don't, used to love Tom. Cruise. I don't, or at least his movies. Early. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't. You loved the original Mission Impossible. Oh yeah. Still do. Still <laughs> yeah. do. No, it's a great movie. Big uh, <laughs> Rams. More on him later. Yeah. Um. No, but like the, it's just now. I'm just like uh, like the uh, li- end of tomorrow, which I think got like retitled Didn't see to it. live, die, repeat. Uh, um, oh, subtitled, I think. No, retitled. Really? Yeah, the marketing material changed on that movie like late. Um, that that movie, I was like, I don't. Want, like, I had no interest in seeing Didn't it, see and it was specifically because of like how he has been lately. I was just like, I don't. I'm not interested. Although I heard a lot of people like that. I really, I ended up seeing it. Okay. Really enjoyed it. I didn't see it. So maybe he'll surprise me again. I feel like I should give him a little bit more credit now after that, but I'm, I'm still not doing it. I Didn't see why. Oblivion. Um, yeah. So. Oblivion. He was in a movie called Oblivion. It's not about the game. <laughs> <laughs> no, what was? I don't remember what that one. It was like it was like a year or two within a year or two of that. Oh, okay. Like Morgan Freeman. Someone else. Okay. An actress who's famous, so I can't think of her name. I vaguely remember like the. The promotional material. It was like that. something with like they're in like they live in like a space station. He goes down to okay. Earth or something like that. Something, something along those lines. Going to look for some mysterious yeah. thing or something or other. I'm as interested now as I was <laughs> then, I guess. No, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just I still like the Mission Impossible movies. Yeah, me too. Um, I didn't see the most recent one, but I've seen the first four. I think I saw the most recent one. Um, and I haven't seen. They're entertaining. I haven't seen the Jack Reacher movies. I haven't seen those. I think my dad reads the books. I think he likes them a lot, actually. But I don't. I don't know if he's actually seen the movies or not. Hmm. Yeah. Well. Anyway, that I. I don't want to see. I like. I'm not interested. Like he reduces some of my interest in the movie, but then uh, Nick Miller <laughs> raises that interest. The immortal. Then I realize that his that Tom Cruise's character's name in the movie is Nick, and that's just gonna throw me for a loop every time they're on screen you're together. Keep thinking that Nick is no, Nick. that's Nick. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know his real name. He's Nick and New Girl. <laughs> Nick Miller from New Girl that may or may not be over. Yeah, that's a, that's that a strange threw one. That me for a loop that that yeah. show might be over because I was not in the proper headspace for the, the catch on. Sorry, cat was like somehow reaching from the counter to the top. Apparently, he's very long. <laughs> I didn't know he was that long of a cat. I, I um, thought because like, it was like you're looking just past me. I thought he was like <laughs> he's about getting to ready to on assassinate you. me because yeah. that cat is trying to kill me. <laughs> I'll get him. The, you know when it got my when it got my hand over yeah. the couch earlier. That time it wasn't the claw. He was chewing on my finger. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Um, so we went from the mummy. Yeah, you have some interest there. I, I'll see it. I, I, I'm it's, hoping it's, there's nothing else out there. I would have. Week. I would purposefully avoid it if they looked like they were trying to do mm. the Brendan Fraser mummy again. Right. That wouldn't make any sense. That's what I'm saying. That's why I was confused. The fact that they're trying to go all in on like it actually being a horror movie, I'm willing to. <laughs> However, it's a if new they idea. Did, if they did, do, if Brendan Fraser was in the movie and they were doing a four, I actually would have been immediately on board, even though I haven't seen the third one. Only if they brought back, <laughs> only if they brought back Rachel Wise, because I think that was mm. a big part of why I didn't like the third one. Yeah, they, they had good they chemistry in those movies. They recast her with a different actress. Oh, uh, okay. It wasn't even like she died and it was someone else. Like they just recast her. Yeah, which is weird. Yeah. Um. So after that, <laughs> the Transformers, <sighs> which is not a new idea. No. Because I no. think you said, if I heard you correctly, that it's oh the same movie again. Yeah. <laughs> Is this movie still on? It's like it's like you you turned it on in the living room, you fell asleep, and it's still playing. It's like a marathon. <laughs> yeah. Am I still watching the same movie that they play it oh again? Oh no, it's the next one. It's probably it's like on TNT, and yes. there's like fourteen hours of commercials or something like that. We're playing. That's why it's still we're playing on. the rewind of oh Transformers. Oh, uh, that doesn't look good. No, it doesn't look good. Is it's no gonna one... make money because Mark Wahlberg's in it, and because the licensed material's name is on it, and. Sir Anthony Hopkins. Probably. Love that man. Oh, great. What are you doing with yourself, Anthony Hopkins? Why are you doing this? There had to be some sort of tit for tat to get him in Westworld. Hmm. I'm this is reckless speculation. This isn't, <laughs> Why? No, no. Wild speculation is a positive thing. This is a negative thing. <laughs> this, is reckless. this is reckless speculation. <laughs> it's, wild, it's wild speculation's awkward cousin. Um, <laughs> or dangerous cousin. Kinda like my dangerous co-host. cousin, if you will. <laughs> 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 and that's an arrested development joke for you guys. Um, 
Yeah, no, because like sometimes you want to like stuff like with like The Rock doing those like kid movies. Like, yeah, they, sometimes they have to play ball to get certain movies mm-hmm. made. He might just be ch- cashing in a check, but does he need to cash in a check with the, this at his age with his prestige? Like, he doesn't need to. So no. I, when I see something like that, I always wonder whether that was a favor to someone. Right. You know. I think really what's happened is he's probably just lost his mind. <clears throat> That's really what it is. He looks like he might have lost so, his. So mind. he's become the character from Red Two. He's just he's just senile. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's just senile, and he's just like. Which I would have said that was talking robots. Sign me up. <laughs> I would have said that was mailing it in and like a favor, and mm-hmm. this is more Rick's speculation. Except he looked like he was having fun playing a crazy old dude. He looked like he was having fun playing. He was a literally crazy having old fun dude. <laughs> being himself on set. Uh, like he stabbed Neil McDonough and was like, "Oh, this isn't a real knife." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of my thing. We we have given Transformers way too much airtime. One, Not one last it. thing: is no one else disturbed by the fact that those ships are flying towards a mechanical asshole? <laughs> the whole thing is that disturbing <laughs> that's us that's like the people flocking to the movie theater it's just all a big, that's a big why visualization I'm not, oh I didn't see the third one I didn't see the fourth one I'm not going to see this one didn't, I Flicks think I saw six, the third one I Flicks, thought, Flicks of the Six audience if you want to see that or if you want to hear us do an episode on that audience, on that episode too bad we're not fucking doing it <laughs> I didn't see the fourth one I was just like uh, why am I still doing this is why I signed and didn't go I didn't go I'm, I can't blame you. Um, then everything turned around. Yes. And the trailer for Dunkirk popped up. Which I'm getting legitimately excited for. Oh, yeah. The anticipation rises. <laughs> Hashtag Tom Hardy. <laughs> <laughs> I just got all the makings of like, stuff we would enjoy. Like, there's people... Uh, uh, it is a Christopher Nolan movie. <laughs> well, Done. I was going to get there. That's it. No, that's it. That, it's all encompassing. You know anti- how anticipation works, right? I know. You build to it. Yeah. I don't, <laughs> let me say. No, you know we're done talking about Dunkirk now. <laughs> yeah. We peaked too soon. All those people are in it. All, yeah, well. All his the peeps, people? His entourage. I mean, Tom, Tom Hardy and Killian Murphy are in it, but is there anyone else? I'm sure. I didn't see Tom Kane. Not Tom. Sure. Tom Michael Kane. Kane. Michael Kane. <laughs> That'd be a totally different movie. I don't know where the Tom came from. I feel like... Hardy. I, was, I guess so, but... The, I you feel were just like mixing was, people. Yeah, so anyway, Michael Caine wasn't, Bizarre in, world wasn't where, in the like, commercial. Michael Caine is Bane. <laughs> <I'd> <laughs> Instead of movie. Alfred. I would see that movie over Transformers <laughs> 5,000 any day. <laughs> Rocky 5,000. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, Christopher Nolan, obviously. Well, oh, and I forgot. Favorite. I, I, I might have and been, been speaking out of school with that, but I'm pretty sure that that dude who was on the boat was... Um, Baylon Greyjoy from Game of Thrones. Yeah. Was that him? I don't know. You said it and I was like, huh, could be. And then I couldn't. Then they didn't show him again, I don't think, after you said that. Maybe not, because they had already shown him a couple of times. It might have been. It might. Or it might be Mike R- Mark Rylance. It's what? definitely Mark Is that Rylance. the guy from uh, that won the Oscar recently? Bridge of Spies. Yeah, yes. yeah. That's who it was. They look that's a little bit alike. A little bit. I only had two seconds to look at them. Mm-hmm. But uh, other. Kenneth Ken- Branagh was in it as well. Branagh. Who? Branagh. Who? <laughs> You could keep saying it both ways. I still don't know who you're talking Gilderoy about. Gilderoy Lockhart, director of Thor and or Thor: oh. The Dark World. Oh, cool. He does this whole thing where he acts and directs. Mm. Jack Ryan, Shadow Recruit. He was the bad Russian guy. Yep, didn't see it. Oh wait, yeah, I saw that one. I know who you're talking about. Yeah, I figured you would. Yes, he had his little captain hat <laughs> on or something like that in that movie. <laughs> wait, did I make up that he directed? I 100 percent made that up. He didn't, oh no! He directed, Reckless speculation. <laughs> he directed the first Thor, but it like okay. it like it, my my just eyes, a little bit of it. My, what my, are you doing with your hand right now? <laughs> my eyes stopped working, and his, the name got lost in the list. It's only four letters. Thor. There. Oh, you were go, you were scrolling through. Yes. His, not important. No. Dunkirk important. Yes. James mm-hmm. Darcy. Also sounds familiar. Yeah. Cloud Atlas. Ah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Tall dude. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, I got you. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to make sure we're on the same. Uh... But uh, yeah, that that's gonna be solid. Um, I that was like I think we were, actually I'm pretty sure we spoke about this trailer on another episode. But like as soon as that really? started, that trailer starts. I didn't realize like I wasn't I hadn't been following like to see if he was making anything new or coming up with uh, any films, Christopher Nolan. But I was like the the first shot opens up. I was like, it turned to Kim. I was like. This is a Christopher Nolan movie. <laughs> and she goes, what? And then like a few more scenes in, she was like, yeah. <laughs> and then his name pops up at the end. It's like, Nailed it. <laughs> Actually, yeah. he didn't have to wait that long. As soon as the actors started popping up, it was like... Well, as soon as you saw Killian Murphy and yeah, Tom Hardy. And, yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's funny because 
when this was like first originally like announced, I thought it was like a documentary, and I was like, yeah. I don't want to see a Christopher Nolan documentary. I, I don't care. Right. Um, and then I saw the first trailer for it. I was like, I'm a little more interested now. <laughs> so I yeah. got to catch up to um, what they're doing with all that. I haven't heard anything about the production of it at all. That, so the point of this this preamble though is that. Marvel's, trailers. Marvel <laughs> villains does obviously a lot like well Marvel Disney Disney does a lot of great things it's it should this whole movie this, this whole movie going experience was fantastic yes from trailers to the final credit yes like it was awesome yes and it, like it, like I'm super excited I, I love when I'm watching trailers and I'm like or I, I always called them that because I've always called them that but it really feels wrong these previews, previews yeah um but uh, like I'm excited like when I'm watching them. I, I'm always ha- like like oh what's gonna be next? Like I get re- I'm I like I hate when people are like oh you know we can be a couple minutes late. The trailers are just gonna be playing. I'm like no, that's <laughs> why I want I want to go now. I want to see the twenty beforehand. See it's funny same cause... trivia question fifteen times on the screen. <laughs> I get it by the third time. Yeah, <laughs> it's <laughs> not the second. Nope. <laughs> Wait, I saw this one. I'll remember it next time. That's usually how that okay, goes down. Sorry. It's funny because, I mean, I used to be excited for trailers pre-internet, right? Mm-hmm. Or even early stages of the internet. Um, and in recent years, less so. But Kingsman! Um, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> we missed we, that one. <laughs> well, because I think we talked about that. Yeah. Um, and well, even just the two of us on our own have talked yeah, about that. That was on there, too. And that was great. At length. I completely I'm forgot excited, that was in there. So excited. So much excitement. Actually, the only movie I was not excited for. The Transformers movie, justifiably. So. It's just like it's like it's like Fantasyland, Fantasyland. These are great movies. I can't wait to see them. Hang on, let me bring that down to earth real quick. This is Transformers. Oh crap! There's still shit being made. And then it's like here's some other great ones yes. that are coming too. Um, <laughs> and it's funny because in a lot of ways, it's a good thing that I guess that they're coming out in this way because I feel like Kingsman was a lot in the same way that Guardians of the Galaxy was, where I was like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, what, what am I getting into? Like, what is... Uh, I don't want to see this one. Yeah. Why do I... Like, I had less reason to see that one than Guardians, because it's like, oh, this fits in with Marvel. Like, if you want to keep up with it, you should probably see this. And it's like, okay, like, I guess I'll go see it. Whatever. Um, the same thing with Kingsman. I was like, but they absolutely caught lightning in the bottle. And as we briefly alluded to, and we're going to get into more now, lightning struck twice with Guardians 2. Mm-hmm. And... Can Kingsman 2 do that? Can they... I like that it's still the same people. James Gunn did 1 and 2. Guardians. Matt Vaughn's doing mm-hmm. 1 and 2. Kingsman. If anyone's going to be able to figure out what they got right and continue to do it, it again, it's yeah. the one who did it. I hate when they take a great movie and they put new writers and directors in. It's like, no, we can just totally do it. We have all the same actors, yeah. whatever. I'll just follow the recipe. No. Yeah. No, you can't do that. <laughs> it's, it's very, very true. No, admittedly... There's been plenty of times that the same director comes back and fucks it up, but I feel like they got sure. a better chance. Yeah. Um, and that was how it was with Guardians, and I, I'm hoping that's how it's going to be with Kingsman, and they've added a bunch of new good actors who I like, so... Mm-hmm. Interesting. I'm, I'm curious to see where it goes. Hopefully, it, they don't... Like, from the trailers, it looks really big. Yes. The scope, and it's just like... Eh, that That worries me a little bit. Um, but that's a pretty common thing to do with those sort of things. Yeah. It's, oh, it's, no, you're just for gonna sure. And the they might... I, I, until, until I see it, like, I'm... I'm rooting for that movie. I want it Definitely. to be good. Yeah. Well, we both loved the first one. Yeah. I remember when I saw the first. You were like, one, you I need to go you see this. The second I was done to watching. Now <laughs> I was like, you need to go watch this fucking movie because yeah. you're gonna love it. Yeah. <laughs> that was like one of your. Uh, that was one of your first on your own movie experiences, wasn't it? Yeah, because I was supposed to go with my brother, and he didn't end up. And I was like, I'm going to see this fucking movie. What a jerk! No. Nah. He doesn't listen anyway. He's not going to even hear right. that. Oh. What a jerk. <laughs> That's what I was saying last, in the last episode. Like, you can't be an actual full-on guest star until you start listening fair, to our fair. stuff. Like, you gotta have... Again, not reverence for us. God, no. But for the idea... Actually, I'd probably be more concerned if you did. <laughs> um, so let's get into it. Please. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Um, I don't know if we should even attempt to talk about this without going into spoilers. Hey, guys. We loved it. If you like the first one, you're going to like it. If you like the Marvel movies, you're going to like it. If you like a big action movie that's not dumb, but can still be dumb a little bit, go watch it. If you love Chris Pratt, you're going to love this movie. (laughs) If you love the idea of Vin Diesel speaking in a falsetto as a little little baby (laughs) baby tree, go see it. We're going to spoilers. And with that, we're getting in because the first thing that we need to spoil is the opening scene. Which is 
done so good. Yes, that was so really smart. Good. It was. It was awesome. So you have this. I like, was wondering, like, as they're setting up, is that what they're gonna do yeah. or not? And like the way that so they have like this big fight, going, like that's about to happen, and like you know they're doing their little banter and they're arguing beforehand, and they want to rockets trying to get the the speakers ready to play the music. And no, no, really, I I agree with yeah, the tracks. I agree with the tracks. <laughs> yeah, I can I can see you winking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm using the wrong eye again. Um, but he that there's this like this, the way that like the camera pulls out, they go to attack, and Baby Groot is standing there with the fiddling literally with he's fiddling cord, yes. with the power cords can't get it together and then puts it together or the line the line cable puts it together and the music starts playing and like he just starts dancing and as that's happening everything goes on in the background yes and, and the, the camera sticks just, with him it is so good and it's like slightly blurred in the background yes. but you can still make out what's happening but you don't it's it's sensory overload that yes. entire scene because you don't know where to look because you don't want to miss anything yes and i want to like when this movie comes out i will be picking up the day it comes out and i'll be watching that intro over and over again to see what i've missed <laughs> because it's just hilarious it's hard to keep track of because the, the action's so frenetic in the background that it's like you know okay that's well, someone's shooting at it. I don't even yeah. know who. Like, oh, there's Drax and, and, flying through the air. Right. Like, and, and, but all along, baby Groot's, Groot's hips are just bobbing to the yeah, side. Yeah, and he's walking around, and he's just <laughs> fucking he's around, and he's, he's chasing a little, the little rat some thing. sort of rat, and then <laughs> he alien rat. starts eating an insect. And, oh, yeah. rat, and, that, then, and yeah. that's oh. what's cool. They start incorporating the characters yeah, coming the, in. Yeah, the break interaction. Rocket, spit that out! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, Drax. You, like, anybody that, if you come into focus, like onto the focus where baby Groot is you're then in the scene like like you can now communicate with the audience in mm-hmm. a way where the rest of it is background yes. and so like that that was really cool and like i love the, that they the carried wave, over the wave to um oh what's her face gamora gamora they had a funny little uh, yeah like, it was, thing, really, like, it, was, it, was like the, it was like the like the little like three or four year old boy who sees like a pretty like girl who's like an adult mm-hmm. and they have like that little like yeah. cute like thing like that's like what's going he waves on. to her like five times throughout the movie that's what i'm saying and it's just the same thing every time pause Wave. Yeah. And like, yeah, it's and there's just, like the so thing when, silly. when when they leave with Ego and he's yeah. like got like the one tear going yeah. down and he's waving and she wipes the tear yeah. down on his face. Like, Adorable. Yes. But uh, that, the way, like, that movie started off with a bang. I love the way that, the, that they kept going, at least for there, the thing with like Drax not knowing that he was, like, whether yep. or not he knew, like, he just stands still and Drax is looking at him as he's trying to catch his breath after getting thrown 100 yards. <laughs> so <laughs> Which, stupid. By the way, Drax. Del- Drax, 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 sorry, Mass Effect Andromeda. There's a Drac, mm, Drac, mm. Drax. Getting confused. Um, yeah, Drax took the sort of beating that should have left him in pieces, let right. alone being able to get up and fight again. Yeah. In that five minutes later, when they're fly- flying, he's, he's like flying getting through dragged space, through everything. getting dragged. He hit every single tree in that. That forest. was a, that was a weird. thing. How does he keep getting up? It was like Three Stooges comedy, right? Yes. Like 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 physically hurting this guy is hilarious. Yes. Let's keep doing it. And well, part of it is because he's laughing through it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like when they crash land into the ship and he gets up, he's laughing yeah. after hitting every tree in the forest. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid, but it's great. Um, yeah, that that open that, but that scene like that set the that set the stage for me though. Like right at the beginning, I was like, like this is. I love that they called back. This is gonna be good at the end of the movie. Drax, Drax, why aren't you wearing the uh, the, the nipples the, thing? My nipples are sensitive. And then the at the end, just points he, and laughs at yeah. it. <laughs> I mean, I love at the end when he slaps the thing on his back. My nipples! Ah, my nipples! <laughs> <laughs> the last thing I expected when everything is like super dire and like yeah. serious at that point. Well, that's and that's getting right into Drax overall throughout this movie. That's him though. Every single time, it's like as soon as it gets too sentimental, he pulls you out of it. Yes, and it, what, but not in a bad way. I think, and it's funny because as much as everyone loved, and I and I loved in the first one with him. They definitely underused him and over like awkwarded him in the yeah. first one. They struck a much better balance in this, yeah. and I think that's why they used him more is because they realized he is like legitimately funny, even yeah. though he's like not like a comedic actor, like right. he's a wrestler, like you know what I mean. Um, and it's he not, still it's not goes that over like, the top, but he's great. Yeah, like he performs the character perfectly, but it's not that he like not to take credit away from him, the act Batista, like not mm-hmm. to take credit away from him. It's not that the man is funny; it's that the character is so perfectly. And written. he leans into it. Yeah, like he, he, yeah. he gives it his all. And that's that's to speak to his acting yes. skills. But like, yeah, he, it's like it is. Those are the writers behind his like shtick, the yes. entire thing of just like really sentimental, and then just rude. But it's great. <laughs> it's, it's great the, the the evolution of that character because the. He now he starts to get some of the sarcasm and stuff like yeah. that, and he's now instead of being the guy who the, doesn't get the sarcasm at all, now he's flawed from Family Guy. 
when he's pointing out the sarcasm. Yeah. Oh, it's funny, yeah. you know, yeah, like, yeah. you must be so embarrassed, yeah. you know. But <laughs> yeah. I could never see him having the scene with um, Mantis mm-hmm. when she wakes him up. I could never see that from the first movie character. I, I tried to be as kind to you as possible by telling you that I found you physically revolting. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I, the, the thought of, of, of then, being with you. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? I'm imagining us being physical. <laughs> like I could not see that out of the character My, what, from the first movie. And like one of his best, the same with his interactions with her are perfect. Yes, the priceless. Movie. And uh, the the line of um, you're like like uh, you're beautiful. On the inside. On the inside. <laughs> it's like, Jesus. Like, but, like, a long enough pause that you're like, ah. Slide that right in. Yes. <laughs> oh. You don't need to believe in yourself. I believe, I believe in you. you. Oh, my God. I didn't think she could do that. <laughs> I had no idea that her tiny, frail body would be able to accomplish this. It's just it's like along those lines. It's so stupid. It's so good, though. He, just, like, he has me cracking up. Like, when you see him, when you know he's about to speak, you're now on the edge of your seat. Yes, you're like, yes. what ridiculous thing are you going to say? Yes. Um, and then his, just his, like, relationships with the different characters, right? So you have... Yeah, because there was a genuine friendship that developed between him and, and, and Quill, which mm-hmm. they didn't have in the first one. Right. Largely antagonistic. Yeah. Um, which is kind of all of them with all of each other all the time in the first one. Mm-hmm. But it was weird like that, that he was the closest to him. Because you can even see that by the end where he's freaking out, yelling at, at um, yeah. Rocket. That was moving. Right? Like, <laughs> yeah. to see that level of connection. Like, he's even at the end of the first one is where you start, you know, where he blasts Nebula and he says, no one talks about my friends that way. Yeah. Six seconds after calling her a green whore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but to see like this, like, not just concern, but genuine horror that right. they're going to leave. Quill behind that yeah. he that was breaking his world mm-hmm. like that level of connection I didn't anticipate. I think it's it's a funny thing, right? Because that makes you that makes you feel the scene more because you you always expect the stupid thing to follow everything that he says, and the fact that it doesn't come makes that delivery so much more powerful. Yeah, he looks physically broken. Yeah. It's the first time he's we're like, a, he's like that about to him. collapse on that console. Yes. Like, I was like, oh my god, it's the first is... time we're seeing something be too much for him. Right. You know, the only time we'd seen him overwhelmed. Was physically in the first one. Yeah. When um, Ronan beats him and throws him into the pool. Mm-hmm. Nothing broke his spirit. It was just that physically breaking his body. You right. Know? But this is the first time we see we saw him broke, break the man, not the body. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Exactly. That was, that was intense. I'm thinking about it now. I'm like, oh. Yeah, that right? Was, that was a, quite the scene. Yeah, that sticks with you. Yeah. Um, the rocket... It's just another hilarious yes. character. Just well, like such to, a just such a jerk. <laughs> you can't talk about this movie without talking about the characters because it's that a is story the, yeah. built like solely on them and their interactions yeah. with each other and the world around. And them. it it plays out like and it's and they know it like obviously yes. that's why it works. Well, I don't think you can make that movie if you don't know that. Right? Because if you do, then the first one's not any good. But like I I think a, a big part of that too, like like actually manifesting itself in like in a scene is the they're going through that asteroid field and they keep pulling Which, by the way like can we get to that first like like that my science nerd like peaked on me a quantum asteroid field did, like you saw what yeah, was yeah. happening right where like they were disappearing and then yeah, popping yeah. up in new places mm-hmm. like actual quantum <laughs> yeah. I, I i was laughing even yeah. though it was like a like a, it's like not supposed to be funny per se i was right. just like good job but you didn't it, fuck that up like, yeah. like Star Wars. <laughs> right, right, like, right. like that's real science there. Even though this is a ridiculous concept, like yeah. that's funny. The uh, <laughs> that is true. The, the, so that scene, they're going through that field and they're they're pulling control of the ship back and forth. The important part about that scene is how long they go without crashing. Yes. While they're doing that. And that's just like... But you know that's they where are, they're going eventually. They are this ball no of chaos can. that just works together. Yes. And that's like... That is like... In in a nutshell, it's that scene. That is them. Yes. That's this whole movie. That's this whole franchise. Yes. <laughs> like, it's, it's, that's, it's based on that. Well, it's specifically to those two characters. Yeah. Right? Like, although we hadn't really seen them butt heads directly with each other like that before. Mm-hmm. Like, that stubbornness yeah. is... And like that like antagonistic like sense like that's both of them like in a nutshell mm-hmm. the whole immature rivalry thing like <laughs> yeah and then like the line what did you say if you were thinking uh if you were acting with what's between your ears instead of what's between your legs we wouldn't have be we wouldn't be here <laughs> if it was between my legs had a hand i would still have been able to fly yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh my god uh, the, uh, the joke just landed so well yeah in this like movie. Uh, you know, all those the stuff about 
how many more creative nicknames and insults they could come up with for Rocket. Mm-hmm. You know, Garbage, which, wait, he, just... he calls him a raccoon and he goes, hey! And he gets yeah. offended by the, I'm sorry, I went too far with raccoon, which is what he is. Yeah. I should have called you Trash Panda. <laughs> <laughs> and what, and you, don't, goes, you don't realize what's happening at he goes, first. He goes, he goes, is that better? Uh, I, don't, I don't know, is it? It's not. It's much worse. <laughs> <laughs> and he's laughing about it. No, no, it's so much worse. <laughs> Oh my you're, God. you're a triangle-faced creature. Yeah. Your dog. And the, yeah, he's feeling his face. <laughs> um, and then I love that because she, she wasn't Mantis wasn't even there when he calls him Trash Panda. But later she she calls him the Garbage Puppy. Garbage Puppy, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, it's so um, what do you think of Mantis? That was an interesting character. At, at first, I was like, "What's going on? Like, like this odd, this just odd creature." Um, I love, I love the relationship that she has with Drax. Yes, in the movie, I can't believe again him leaning into it. How insulting he was to her yeah. repeatedly. Mm-hmm. It was fucked up. <laughs> yeah, it was really, it was just really mean. But great. But she doesn't. She mostly she, lets it slide. Up. Like after yeah. the first time, it like hit her pretty hard, and then like after that, it just kind of like. Okay, this is a known quantity now. Mm-hmm. Like, apparently, I'm ugly. Right. You know. So it's it really interesting. Like, it's it's the she is the character that makes you that makes you think. Kind of like um, the same way that the Gamora's character is thinking. It's like you're introduced to this guy that's Peter's father. Ego. Yeah, and um, you're like, and like he's on this world, and there's nobody on the world. There's all these plants and like these beautiful things, and this one other thing. That doesn't fit. Yes. So, as a whole, it kind of shatters the whole, like, what, like, this, like, perfect little... It's like, why are you here? Like, what is the point of this? What's going on? There's something bigger. There's something different. Yeah. And, like, the fact that, like, she feeds off emotions, you you start to, like, is able to feel other people's emotions when she's starting to, like, read their... Like, the way that they the other characters feel about certain things. Like, she starts to... Like you understand, start to see where her emotions are, and then it's like she wants to share them because, like, the way that they're sharing with that was her such a great is... line after she does that with Quill, mm-hmm. and then Drax does the thing from the trailer, you oh, yeah. do me, yeah, yeah, and he's just still cracking up, and she touches him, and she starts cracking up. I've never up. felt such humor, I've never felt such humor. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. And the, 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 the same, like, kind of do me, do me thing, it's like, do one of those on me, and yeah. he, just, he just puts him to sleep, and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> so good. Oh, man. Um, what did you think about them breaking the characters up? Because I had heard some people complain about that. I think it was... I mean, I would have been... Like, if I wasn't paying attention to that, like, going in. But um, that could have easily screwed stuff up. Because they have... The way they play off of each other. That scene. Flying through the asteroid field. The chaos that is that surrounds them. The opening scene. Like, it all works so well together. When you start to take them apart, you start to worry that it's going to break things down a bit. And it didn't bother me. Yeah, I didn't have a problem with it, especially because it allowed us to reframe the way that we look at them. Yep. Because it allowed us to look at characters like Yondu and Nebula, mm-hmm. um, whereas I think it would have been overwhelming. It's an impenetrable force to get through if those characters are yes, together. You're I not going to be able to Yes, I think you wouldn't have been able to yeah. look at them if they're doing that against the whole roster, as mm-hmm. opposed to just looking at them alongside Rocket and Groot. Right, and when you with that perspective, if you, if you think about that, I am so glad they did it because... Yondu's character is fantastic, and yes. I think Michael Rooker does an incredible job. And I him. enjoyed him in the first one. I, yeah. you know, they didn't give him a ton to do, but like you know, he was funny. And and I agree, it would have been. I think they struck a good balance with it, like having the book ended, or like beginning and end of the movie with the whole team together, and in the middle is where they split them up because we kind of, if you if you missed that interaction, you got more on the back end, mm-hmm. even though it was the serious stakes and things got more dramatic at that point. And this is a movie that definitely didn't. Leaned into feelings more, yeah. Um, which the literal representation of that is Mantis, right? Um, but you know, the first one was a lighter affair for most of it. First five minutes, not obviously, and then the end. I think I mentioned in the past, you know, like the, I don't know what it is, but there's like you get an upswell of emotion at the end of the first one mm-hmm. when they're playing that that music, and it's good music. Yeah. Not just the the soundtrack, but like the actual score yeah. to the to the movie. That upswell is the whole thing with the Infinity Stone and everything, like. Like, it's not the whole thing with, like, Logan, where it's, like, you're literally brought to to tear up, but, like, mm-hmm. it's, like, that feeling, like, you get that upswell, like, you, oh, my gosh, like, I feel the energy, mm-hmm. like, inside of me or whatever like that. We are great. We are great. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was a great yeah. addition to the, to the, the post-credits um, or whatever, but, uh, yeah, no, like, uh, 
this one throughout the whole movie, in, I thought, in, investigated the whole thing about like feelings a lot more and how we view the world around us and ourselves, how we fit in the world mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Because we get that sort of self-examination a lot with Nebula and Yondu and Rocket and Quill as he tries to grasp what sort of purpose or fate is meant for him. Mm-hmm. What what the reveal of who his father was and what his father was up to meant for what his life was supposed to look like. And even to a lesser extent, we got some... Well, I mean, maybe not so much with Groot, where he fits in, but even Gamora, some, as she comes to terms with why Nebula hates her so much. Right. Um, it was a character study in all of them. But I thought that the ones that really shined out were Rocket, Yondu, and Nebula. You know, Quill is, without a doubt, because that's where the whole central plot of... Right. But as far as just characters, like those three, especially when we kind of get that reveal of Yondu when he's yelling at Rocket and he tells him, I know who you are because you are me. Mm-hmm. Oh. Which, that was that was a cool bit of everything. Writing, every, yeah. like... Well, yeah, every, everything about that, right? Like you, were, like you were about to say, the writing, awesome. This is part of what I was saying about, like, Michael Rooker... Performance, crushing yes. ...crushing it in yes. this movie. And then Bradley Cooper's voice acting. Yes. Fantastic. Yes. <laughs> It's awesome that that scene. That seems super powerful, right? <laughs> yeah, I loved it. And like, you don't expect to get that sort of dramatic connection on screen um, in this sort of movie. Mm-hmm. Um, but I thought it was really cool, and I thought it was written well and it was delivered even better. Yeah, and well, th- that whole thing about like making you care about these characters and like the story and everything going on um, to, to pr- further prove that they're very capable of this. In the first movie, I don't care about Nebula. Well, she I actually, I find to. her, I find her extremely annoying, and every time she's on screen, I'm kind of just like, ugh. Well, she's kind of supposed to be. She's an over right. the top villain, right? But I, it's just, it's, it's almost, it's almost too far. It's almost to the point where like you're like degrading the experience for me. Like I don't want you. No, on I screen. never felt that. In the That's first how time. I felt with her. But the, with this one, I was immediately like, from like the time that she gets on screen. At first, I, I started to have those feelings, but I was like, as they, like, as, like right away, they started to get me interested in why this was going. Like, like okay, she's she's around for this movie. Let's there let's was give always her some... there always had to be more to their relationship yeah, for sure than just that just pure jealousy. Obviously, right. that was a big part of it, but it had to be something more than that. Um, and it was good to see that because otherwise, I think that her stay with the franchise probably should have been cut short. Mm-hmm. Um, and to that point, like. I was, and remember guys, we're full spoilers here, I was expecting that she was going to be the one who got the tragic redemption story, and it yeah. ends up being Yondu. Right. They both get their own redemption. But I was surprised, considering how good Michael Rooker is, yeah. and how good the character is, and how well he fits in with them, because Nebula didn't necessarily fit in with the group at large, mm-hmm. and Yondu absolutely does. Yep. Um, so I feel like, even though... Story wise and impact wise, it was an impactful move. I'm disappointed because I feel like we're being robbed of more fun. Yeah, I, I in get. The I, get, I get that. I but I'm I am happy with the way they did it because like he deserved that send off after that performance. Yes, like I thought it was just so good and like the way that they did it. Like, no, I, it was good. As the, it, we're getting to like I know what's happening. They like, sold oh. it, and by the time he dies, it mattered. Mm-hmm. Um, I think had you killed him off in any similar redemption after the first one, yeah, you wouldn't have cared right like that. They really made you like the character. Yes, he really makes you like the character. Yes. <laughs> so from that standpoint, it was well executed, and I get why they did it, and mm-hmm. I respected it, and I, I appreciate what they did. But I selfishly wish we get more right. of him in the future. And that, that also goes to like like a, that's probably a tough decision they had to make because they probably realized they, they probably know they could have gotten more out of him oh, and yeah. done more with it but they're like they made, I feel like they made a good call like I said not because I don't want him in it but I feel like it, it has such a bigger impact if it's It him. also might be from an accounting standpoint and I don't mean could that be. from paying for him mm-hmm. I mean that when you look at the roster of characters who have had some sort of impact in the Marvel Cinematic Universe like in the upcoming Infinity Wars I saw a, a while back some sort of thing like named characters who matter. It's like there's like sixty characters yeah. across the whole franchise. It's too much. Mm-hmm. So unfortunately, I think he drew the short straw. Maybe, maybe. maybe. I mean, I'd rather them have just left him out of yeah. the well, if Infinity Wars and bring him back for Volume Three. All right, if they're trying to do the that, like, yeah, I, I could see that because um, you know, if they had to pick between him and Nebula, 
Right. Nebula's story is set up to be more important for the Infinity yeah. War because her sole purpose in life now that she's reconciled with Gamora is to kill Thanos. Mm-hmm. And Thanos is who we're going to see yeah. in the Infinity Wars. Right. The um, It's also about... I, I think part of it, too, is there was a, the whole underlying... Not so underlying, but super heavy-handed per, like me, <laughs> purpose was like the whole point, especially for um, Ego. Yeah. Like that was like the whole thing the driving going on force this movie. The driving force for this whole thing, yeah. And... Uh, Yondu and like there's the there's the line at the end that Peter says something about you know, it's a it's a typical cliche line of like what you're looking for is like right in front of you yes. deal. Um, Yondu had a very specific purpose. He is Peter Quill's dad, right? He brings him up. And this he makes him who he is because he is the one that raised him. And this movie allowed us to see him rediscover that purpose, right? Because I think. It, that's obviously what caused the schism between him and Peter is that he lost that along the way. Mm-hmm. Um, and part of that was the selfish nature of him not letting Peter know why he had done the things he had done. Right. So I think he forgot himself. Mm-hmm. You, tell self, you tell someone a lie often enough, you tell yourself a lie often enough, it becomes your truth. Mm-hmm. So I think that he lost that and he finally found that again in this one. He, re- he rediscovered the fact that the reason that he pissed off so many people in this galaxy is because he found that desire to be that father figure right. for Peter. And his purpose was to leave that lasting mark on him. Like, yeah. and he's like, he, his purpose is to get Peter where, like where he needs to go in a way. Yeah. And it's, it's just, it's, just, it's very sweet. Yeah. <laughs> I liked it. <laughs> well, you liked, you liked that whole idea with purpose. Um, is there more you want to go into with that? Um, like, specifically with like ego and stuff? It, well, too? yeah, so that was like the main, that was the. Because we're going, I mean, face. we can come back to the character yeah. stuff. Um, so the, let's get into a little heavy plot. Ego's, ego's, in quotes, purpose, he like, is that he needs to reshape this universe and make it all him. Did, did you see a, a parallel to the Matrix? Yeah, it's just, I. Because he's become essentially a virus. Right. His sole purpose is to replicate, right? Which is what literally like virus yep. and bacteria and le- lesser organisms like that are. Um, I mean, I guess to some extent we are like we re- appropriate and everything, but it's not for a domination standpoint. Or we have a better idea of in our mind what, why we mm-hmm. continuation of civilization and everything, as opposed to the mindless ferocity with which like viruses and bacteria can like reproduce like that. Yeah, uh, I found myself not at first, but later on in the movie um, once his true intention was revealed. Um, Reminding myself, especially as you see the seeds that he left around the galaxy taking shape and dominating those planets, mm-hmm. uh, it reminded me of Agent Smith. Right. His speech about purpose as he reveals his multiplicity mm-hmm. to uh, Neo in the second one. And furthermore, how by the end of the third one, he has literally dominated the entire Matrix. Everyone is now him. Mm-hmm. And it's a, kind of the same thing, right? Where he's yeah. just going to spread himself... And that's all he knows is that single-minded and purpose. And like take over everything. Yeah, make it all me. <laughs> Which, I mean, again, it's Hugo Weaving, but yeah. that speech that he gives in that. Mm-hmm. So great, the whole the purpose thing. Yeah. It's purpose that defines us, purpose that drives us. And it's, it's this, that, those same themes were echoed in yeah. what Ego had to say, less eloquently, but still the same thing, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... It, and whatever, like I'd say, that's the, it's like the necessary... It was just like that's funny. That's actually the part that falls short for me in the movie. Is like that particular aspect of it wasn't super interesting to me, but it was obviously necessary. Mm-hmm. Like just like the fact that he is this thing that's like taking over, whatever. It's just like for some reason, like that. Out of all of the craziness that goes on and everything in it, like that particular piece of it, I was just like, eh. there's just something about it I just didn't love. I can understand that. Um, I will say that I had been very curious once not what his motivation was at the beginning but once mantis shows a crack in her solidarity with him Mm -hmm. okay what is he actually up to right um and this is a menacing thing and it had stakes right it had import as we see planets and people getting killed by his expansion right that was the name of his plan right the the great expansion yeah something something like like that. that um so that part of it like getting up to them revealing it and stuff like that I found that interesting in the way mm-hmm. that he's trying to sway. I definitely liked the way it was revealed. Yes. Um, and the fact that he wasn't doing it in the way that we seem like with a red skull in Captain America, where he wasn't doing it because, oh, I'm evil. It was right. more the idea of a once great mind 
that's become so possessed of what their goal is that they've lost sight of I was having a hard time figuring out what was bothering me about it. It's in the end, it's petty. <laughs> like, like, this see, whole, I'm just it uh, wasn't it, me see. or it's. It, it, I mean, shocker! It's, it's his big ass ego, and it's why. <laughs> but like, it's like me, me, me. That was a little on the nose, yeah. I suppose. Um, damn it! My doctor seized it there. <laughs> <laughs> throw my pen at you. I mean, as long as it didn't poke me in the eye, I probably would have warranted it there. What you can't see in this recording is that I broke the fourth wall and just, like, <laughs> stared to the side. I didn't do it on purpose <laughs> at all, but as soon as I said it, I realized it. Um, that happens to me more than it should, probably. Yeah. It's been happening a lot lately. <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's me writing. You'll first. rhyme in text, it's, and I'll be like, shut up. It's me writing for the spin tune. Not that I write in rhymes, <laughs> but, and now I'm going to try and find a way to write some sort of, like, limerick or something. That'll be one of my stories coming up. Never done that before, but nice. we'll see how it goes. Um, no, but I like—I actually like that as an idea, because we've had too many megal- megalomaniacs um, in this universe, this Marvel Cinematic mm-hmm. Universe, um, that did it for greed or power, and this was different. Even though it was a similar theme, it was a different look at that, mm-hmm. because he wasn't doing it to be menacing it, and he even said that he had regrets that it was going to come at the cost of others, whereas all the other ones were like... Well, you're in my way. Fuck you. Yeah. Um, his, he did seem to show to whatever extent you believe or or think that it hurt him. He seemed to show an understanding and remorse of the cost that it came at. Right. Like the thing about it broke my heart to have to leave your mother. It broke my heart to have to kill your mother. Yeah. Even though he sounded a little. And that's the thing. Is it, 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 it never he... seems sincere. Well, the thing about the tumor was a little flippant. Yeah. But other than that, actually, I did sense some sincerity about it. I, what, the, I think the one thing... I might have just been a mechanic to, to like, let Chris Pratt run with I that piece. I think it was. Like, okay, like, let, like, let's, actually, not, let's that, not overshadow this, because he's going to blow us away in this next scene, and he does. Actually, <laughs> that, that line, if anything, I think was kind of a broken note in that whole thing. I don't think it fit, um, mm. the idea of it, because it was a little too flippant. Because I did sense sincerity in what he had been saying before that. Right with his regret um so that's why i found him to be a little more compelling than some of the other villains because he wasn't doing it for personal gain he is a as he said lowercase g god yeah um but it's a god whose intent was corrupted Mm -hmm. and i thought that was a little more interesting than just him being a representation of evil it's just a representation of a pure goal that's been corrupted yeah i thought that was a more interesting take on this sort of villainy than other things you know what I mean Mm -hmm. because it still suffers from Marvel having its villain only last one movie right but in this case I don't I think that that was probably right because there's not really a way to to continue him on he was so powerful and so possessed of that drive and determination that there's no way you can fix that Mm -hmm. and keep him around Um, and I guess they deferred Aisha because I thought she was going to be her and the Sovereign were going to be the main adversary in this one um, and it's a rare case where a studio, they couldn't keep under wraps that Kurt Russell was in it or who he was going to be, but they kept under wraps to what extent and the fact that he was the main threat, which I thought was cool because mm-hmm. so many times with uh, a lot of this, like journalists investigating stuff like that, like they can kind of suss these things out beforehand. Um, I liked being somewhat surprised that he was the bad guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And we'll, and we'll get I, I, Aisha in another movie right. somewhere because when she set that up in the post credit, which we'll talk about later. That she still has plans and that they still harbor the desire to kill the Guardians. Right. Uh, when last we saw them. So I thought that was kind of a cool... I thought it broke some of the conventions of some of the other Marvel movies. Sure. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but I just to get, I just want to get back to... But I don't want to forget about this. Uh, but that scene with, uh, with Peter and Ego. When they're fighting? Um, well, when he finds out about his mom. Oh, yeah. And that's this is where... Um, this is gonna be a reoccurring thing, the whole Vince Gilligan thing. Like a comedian, a comical actor can they're good actors. Yes. But, right. Or and, can be. Yeah, or can be. And um he it helps he makes you feel everything that you would imagine that that character feels with a single look <laughs> and with no words in for about a two second span and you're just like and you know it's coming. You know as it's happening, you know it's coming. Well, not not just that I know it's coming. I'm waiting for some one specific thing because when Ego right. gave him his purpose, mm-hmm. he changed his eyes to see the stars. Yeah. 
and I'm waiting. When's the reveal coming? They're totally gonna have him blink and his eyes go back to normal. Yep. When's it coming? When's it coming? And then it finally and, yeah, happens. And it's not. Yeah. And it's not. It's and. Don't get me wrong; it's not it's not the special effect piece of them moving his eyes back. It's the way it's just the expression on his face afterwards. That's just like snapping back to reality. Go get him right now! <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so uh, it's so great, and he, he just Chris Pratt just kills it. Yeah. in these movies, and he's just so awesome. Yes, because I wouldn't have necessarily thought of him as a big time actor. I mean, he's done serious roles before, but I never thought anything mm-hmm. of it because it's more earlier in his career, so it was yeah. more bit roles, um, like something like Moneyball. He's no, he doesn't get that much to do with. Right. Um, and that was at the same time around as like the beginning of Parks and Rec. So he was no one then. Right. Um, but he's a pretty solid actor. Yeah. Um, and this, I think this movie really showed that off. And he is just really, really funny. And something I was telling you about earlier, like the, the physical comedy too mm-hmm. is unreal. Like there's the scene, it's in trailers, where Drax is up behind him and he's just startled like yes. I mean, I just like that delivery like I genuinely believe like this he guy startled, creeped yeah. up on you and the, like your immediate delivery of the line after that just shadow like <laughs> just, I loved it it's so funny and like it's, it's not like yeah that's good writing sure like that's a silly a little silly thing to put in there but like that delivery is what makes that land mm-hmm. and it's just perfect it's yes. quick it was a nice snap really, right. the microphone really caught it <laughs> it resonated yeah like, I felt it echoing through my brain yeah <laughs> You just like shut down, like I struck a weird nerve. Um, do me, do me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the, he. I just just wanted to make sure that it doesn't go inside. Like he was fantastic, and I anything that he's going to be in, I am definitely interested in seeing. Yeah, at this point, for sure. I mean, I really we both enjoyed. Um, I was called the New World Parks and Rec. You love Andy. Andy, you gotta love Andy. You always come back when Andy gets featured in in any scene. You know, is your you know you got a pretty good chance of getting a good laugh out of him. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a funny dude. <laughs> <laughs> he really is. Oh man, the if you if you like him and if you've either seen or even if you haven't seen Parks and Rec, just like hop on YouTube and just go through some of the blooper reels with him. That one. That one. That one cut scene. The, when they were doing the thing that everyone's seen it I'm sure you must have seen it when they're they're talking about comeback stories yeah, uh, yes and don't even <laughs> no, don't even say it go watch this one just look up um, Andy Dwyer Andy Dwyer comeback deleted scene <laughs> comeback it's so so <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, just make sure you're not watching shock. it work just make sure you're not watching it at work NSFW uh, immediate shock on my face when I saw that I was like that was great actually the reaction my reaction was mirrored in Jerry's reaction. Yeah, Jerry's reaction is what makes the whole video. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, I thought goodness. he was going to have a heart attack. So funny. <laughs> so funny. Um, but, yeah, so that... Just overall. So, so Such a fun movie. Yeah, yeah. Were there any other characters and such you want to talk, John, before getting into this post-credit world? Yeah, uh, well, for one, I thought it was interesting. We talked about her a little bit. Uh, Nebula. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know... It's Karen Gillan as the actress, um, which until... Recently, we um, we'll be having an episode eventually at some point about um, the circle, mm-hmm. and um, she's also in that. Both these movies came out within like a week of each other, um, and she's featured pretty. Um, oh, I'm looking at her now. She's also going to be in this weird remake of uh, Jumanji. Um, oh, really? Yeah, I had no idea she was going to be in that. But um, before the before the first Guardians, I, I didn't. I don't know her at all. I don't know anything that she's been in. Okay. Um. So. She kind of seems to be like budding as like a star here a little bit. Um, and she was, I liked her in the circle. Um, she was interesting. She kind of becomes a bit of a, um, a bit of a representation of the audience and, and our belief or disbelief in what's going on in that movie. Um, and I liked her a lot because they let her do more than, as you were saying, being just kind of like annoying mm-hmm. and like over the top. I liked seeing that out of her like seeing some depth to that character um and also it just like talking about people who are like kind of coming onto the scene some i don't know her from anything other than not her um the character uh, aisha the the head of the the high priestess of the sovereign or whatever mm-hmm. um elizabeth debicki um weird that we would continue to talk about this because i don't know how often this sort of thing would come up over and on but uh she was also in the night manager she was a pretty important character in that. Um, she played uh, Hugh Laurie's uh, girlfriend. So, like, she's, like, an important... She's very, very, very important to the plot. And she plays similarly kind of, like, this 
haughty presence. Okay. But a very, very different person. Um, and they give her much more room to shine in that. Um, I was impressed with her performance in that show. And she was interesting in this, but they didn't really give her much to do other than to just kind of be lording over the proceedings, right? So I'd be curious, because um, as we were going to we'll dip into it in a few minutes, the uh, the uh, post-credit stuff, um, I don't think that we've seen the last of her. Right. So I'd be curious to see how much like room they give her to run with. Yeah, like they created a villain in this three. movie. Yeah. Which is interesting. Which was... Like, did no one have a problem with the fact that... Like, like why does Drax not call it out? Like, when... When Rocket steals the fucking things as they're walking out, like yeah, like the, is that is that the plot hole you're? I mean, you're yeah, it's about? like a little bit of an issue, right? Like, I get why he might want to say it quietly on the side, yeah, but like, because the whole thing that they're going to kill you for any sort of dishonor or whatever, right. but like they couldn't have just made a like he couldn't have been like, Quill, can we make a stop back to that place we were like five minutes ago so he could put those batteries back? Yeah. I wasn't going to kill the shit out of all right. of us. Yeah, that was that was odd. Um, I guess it doesn't. I don't. I don't know because like he. Drax sometimes just completely just misses. Yes. So if he maybe if he reveals that to any other character, that's maybe what happens. Maybe they go back and they put the batteries back. I guess so. But if it's Drax, they are able to get away with it. And also, it's it doesn't. They don't keep you. They just they want to make sure that you understand like what he did because you see the, the scene where he takes it mm-hmm. right and then like there's he showing it in the bag just because he's being goofy rather than just like kind of sneakily saying like oh why are they after us oh and then revealing it later that he stole them they're just like being up front with it I also didn't think that that was going to come up so soon I thought that was going to be like later down oh, yeah. the line I just, they just like jumped right into it like I thought it was going to be like oh they're back we stole their shit not mm-hmm. like they didn't even get out of the atmosphere yeah. <laughs> of the planet <laughs> well tiny man <laughs> outside of his vision blew everything up oh one inch man really <laughs> Well, maybe if he's closer, he'd be bigger. Yeah, that's how I, eyesight works. I, I hope that's. I hope that's the one inch man. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, is um two characters that we need to touch on before we get into the post credit thing is Sean Gunn. I'm looking at that too. Is, is he? Is he related? Uh, yeah, that's what I'm wondering. I, I'm not sure. Um, because I'm wondering if they're going to give him a bigger role going forward. Right. Because, it, like, they gave him a decent amount of... He's the cousin of Mark Gunn. Yeah. I don't know who Mark Gunn is, okay. but... I, was just I know curious. that Mark Gunn's not James Gunn. But uh, he was he was a cool character. He was... I think they're brothers. Oh, really? Uh, I'm seeing in some trivia here, the character Gunn on the TV series Angel was named after Angel creator Joss Whedon worked with both Sean and his brother James Gunn. Oh. Cool. Brother of Brian Gunn, James Gunn, Patrick Gunn, and Matt Gunn. He was he was, he was pretty good. Former brother in law of Jenna Fisher. I liked his uh, his presence on screen. Um, Craglin. What? Craglin? <laughs> I think that's his that's name. His name. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I I couldn't I couldn't think of his name. That's why I was like I don't actually remember really hearing it to be honest with you. But, uh, uh, it was only only Yandu said his name. I think oh, okay. whenever he called him, like when he was like up on the ship and he was yeah. like giving him instructions, like he said his name. He had a couple of great deliveries though, like the the feeling really guilty when he realizes like all these men are being killed. Because they killed of, all my friends. Yeah, that then the um, calling Peter captain. Yes, at the end and good. giving him. Giving him the arrow and him hitting, which is again. Which let's go friggin' right into. Well, one of the before post-credits before we go into the post credits, um, Sylvester Stallone. Do you think he comes back for another movie? Oh, no. Because they I gave kinda, him they I gave kinda, him a post credit too, and he's did. there at the beginning I and he's there was, at the end. I, I'm hoping that it was just like a little, just a little fun thing to add in. So I just feel like they would have given him more to do though. I don't. I don't think they need to. The, well, well, whether or not they need to. Yeah. Well, they actually. They really don't need to. They. They actually. They really need to not because, like you said, Maybe. there's there's already way too many people. I mean, specifically in, in Guardians. Guardians. Maybe, okay. Not in the Maybe not in, in Infinity Wars. Okay. Maybe in Guardians. Maybe as like another. I'm wondering whether maybe, maybe it was a feeler to see like how the people, people feel about were this inter- character. Were they interested by if, him? If, if I then the part of me that feels like they're not going to do that is like. I, if they're doing that, they also probably have to bring in like Rams. Thing Rams, right? Like why? Which I don't have a problem with. I don't either, but I just don't. I don't know that. Well, maybe, I'm wondering. Maybe they're just leaving themselves open because they don't really. Maybe they don't have a full idea of what they exactly want to do with it next. We have kind of a power vacuum now with Yondu gone uh, in the Ravagers. You know that that considering how many of them are, they're gonna be in Volume Three. Hmm. So does he fill that role of of oh, right chief? Ravager that right, right, matters right. in the galaxy. Maybe. Um, so that's what Very I'm wondering possible. whether you not that you necessarily have a big role, but that he'd be relevant in Volume Three. Yeah. 
Um, I was just curious about that because I knew he was going to be in this as in a relatively quote unquote cameo. But once they saw that he mattered, that Yondu really deeply cared about his opinion of him, made me wonder whether or not he was going to have a role, and he didn't really. So I'm wondering whether he'll bring him back to him for another one. Right. Yeah. I don't. I guess. And the addition of Vin I don't really Rain, care Vin Rain's either being, way. Like his friend. Like, I, yeah, I feel like it could work either way. It's like it's either one. It's just a fun little thing. Maybe these people are like the movies. Maybe they just want to look a little. Hey, throw me in if you if you have a spot. Like maybe it's just like just a little whatever, or maybe they are planning something bigger. Either way, if they go either route, I'm fine with it. It works. Yeah, right. I mean, I, I don't have a problem either way. I was just a little surprised. I thought they were gonna let him do more. Whatever. Yeah. So let's uh, let's go into the uh, post credit scene. Post credit. So this is back to the way this entire movie going experience was great. Was it started off with awesome trailers, awesome movie. And the best way credits have ever been done. Like it was like an interactive credit roll. Like yes. it was awesome. There was little dancing many, characters yeah, on the side. Characters moving about. The uh, they actually replaced a lot of the words with "I am Groot." Yes, and then, and then like they translated it, to the yeah. like to what it actually said. And then you had David what, was Hasselhoff. It, was it, were there five? Were there five? There's five screen, I think. Like, scenes. Yeah, there was the scene with. Craglin trying to learn how to use the arrow and hitting Drac. Which was great. Drax, which was funny. Hilarious. He's just screaming in pain as it yeah. impaled him in the shoulder. Ah! <laughs> and he just like kind of slowly walks off screen. Awesome. You had like something straight out of one of those like over the top commercials about how to talk to your kid with Teenage Groot. Yep. And. <laughs> yep. <laughs> which it gives us, I, I wonder if that's where we're going with him next. I'm actually kind of hoping not because it seems like that'd be an annoying character to me. Um, which, Moody Groot? Yeah. So I feel like what's actually... I feel like we're actually just going to get almost... We're going to get back to full-size Groot. Pretty much. Because what's happened is if you watch the, the post-credits of the first movie, he's a little... Yeah. A little stick. And then in this one... Twig. He's Twig. <laughs> and then in this one... He did call you Twig. <laughs> <laughs> in this one, um, he's... He, he's like a little bit older than that. And then like in the post credit scene, he's an adolescent. So I imagine that if you were to do that same amount of jumping, he'd be an adult. Yeah. So hopefully they're just bringing him back, which I would actually prefer. Because yeah. I want that character back in full Plus, in full force. The stakes are going to be huge. We're going to need someone to kick some ass. Yeah, for sure. Baby Groot was funny. And he did a little ass kicking himself. Yeah. Specifically that one dude who kept messing with him. But um, yeah, we need a full size <laughs> wasn't looking at you funny. <laughs> uh. um, so we had those two. We had... Uh, Sylvester Stallone's character meeting up with like some of the other important captains it seemed like of the Ravagers right. one of which was Ving Rhames saying and that's another reason so he's like hey are we gonna do this so, so I'm wondering like, was he well, like, even if it's like a because it sounded like they said oh we're gonna get together and steal shit together again or something mm-hmm. like even if we get like maybe the first sequence of volume 3 could be them stopping a Ravager heist and it's Sylvester Stallone he gets arrested and then we don't maybe we see him again maybe we don't you know what I mean right. like he could give us 10 minutes of screen time you know what I mean yeah. Because um, that's kind of the way they kick this movie off anyway, is them defending this interdimensional being that's stealing the batteries or whatever. Right. Um, and then we had the one that's probably the only one... The that real post credit scene. Really post credit scene with Aisha seeming a bit disheveled. Mm-hmm. Hair all over the place and shit, which they're supposed to be like these perfect beings. This is the first time we've kind of seen a crack other than when they were freaking out in their little... Uh, which, by the way, we didn't even talk about that. The video game chairs that they were that, flying. Yeah. That was kind of a cool thing, especially cool. since this is like, you know, this whole 80s like thing. Like, it looked like an 80s arcade game that they were all playing. And even right. the laser sounds were those sounds. But um, she reveals, it seems, they didn't say, they just said Adam. Um, and there's been hints that Adam Warlock, who, I, again, I'm not a big comics reader, but is like a pretty big deal in the Marvel Universe. Um, it seems like we'll get in Volume Three probably right. the return of Aisha and her creation, Adam Warlock, which right. is a big deal. I'm just curious, like how that plays out. If these guys are all in Infinity War, is he in? Does this character show up in there? I don't think he will. I don't know. I think maybe maybe we'll see his first reveal as a post credit to that. Maybe. Um, but I think I would think that if it would make most sense. I don't think they'd have room to put the Sovereign in Infinity Wars. Right. So I think that we'll see them return as a greater threat in Volume 3, and Adam Warlock probably would be her strong right arm, right? Mm-hmm. Who's going to kill the Guardians. Um, so I'm curious to see where they go. I'm really curious to see, um, not knowing, I, just knowing that he's a very important character, curious to see who they cast for that. Oh, yeah. Um, well, if and when, you know, that time comes, well, not if, when that time comes up. Um not knowing enough about the character, I don't know if it would be someone younger or older, more famous, or if they choose someone who's like 
still on the rise. Um, but that could be a cool right. addition to the universe. Yeah. Um, I would like to see who they intro. Yeah. For a new character. Was that all the, the scenes or was there one more? I feel like that was all of them. That if was it... a really crisply <laughs> caught meow. <yeah. laughs> if, there was, if there was anything else, it was probably just like... It, it's probably another silly, <laughs> another silly one. Um, but the other the two other things to touch on in the credits were... Um, the cat is going nuts right now. And yes. It's kind of hilarious. I'm not editing it out. No. I'm leaving it. Well, I don't um, you could. <laughs> I can. I'm not doing it. No, uh, <laughs> so there's uh, the little Howard the Duck... That was he, popped, the he popped up twice. Well, they, he was in like a. He, he was, was in still a was dancing in the, at the end. What's that? Was he in a still or was he? He dancing? was he was moving in one of those circles, okay. like one of the animated, like like the illustrated circles. But yeah, it was funny to see him at that. Was it Contraxia or wherever yeah. it was uh, in the, at the very beginning where Yondu was? Right. That like it seems to be like some sort of like a real seedy place. Central meeting point for all the different yeah. factions of Ravagers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, just seeing him casually there after having escaped his entrapment in the Collector's. Uh, right. Place. And then we got we got Jeff Goldblum as the Grandmaster in our first actual seeing of yeah. him on screen. And then uh, David Hasselhoff. David Hasselhoff. Just we, we are, are great. <laughs> so what a great way to end it. It was. Just... And there was also I put him out. I don't know who he was. They were capturing those pains on the side. Yeah. Who was that random old guy dancing? I don't know. I wasn't sure if it was somebody like that we should have recognized or if it was he almost he did look like one of the guys that was maybe in the car. Um, not in the car. On the ground when the planets were being destroyed. Maybe. So you know what he reminded... He looked kind of like... And I just didn't get a good enough look. And it was like a weird coloration over his face. The only other thing was... Was he maybe the uncle from the first one? Oh. I don't he know. Because that guy was bald or balding too, I think. Possible. That was like... We'll have to, we'll have to look into it. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure someone's gonna, someone who's got more time on their hands than us has probably <laughs> picked it out and it's on the internet somewhere. But we tried right. not to read anything that was too spoilerish. I remember what the last one was. Uh, the last one was the recurrence of Stan Lee's cameo. Yes. Oh man, that was silly. Talking to those random yeah. Well, I liked dudes, it, and I liked that it was like he's like in that one. I was a FedEx where he was talking. He's he's relaying all his cameos. Yes. That's what he's telling them. Yes. Yes. And I was like, this is like this is too much. I this, it's a ca- it's a cameo inception. Yes. It was, it's great. Yes, it was a cameo inside of a cameo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was so stupid, but I loved it. I love I love when he shows up on screen. Yes. It's so silly. Um. You got anything else? Uh, I think so. That's, That's it for me, Taserface. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't believe that you look in the mirror every morning and think, Taserface. Yeah, people are going to be scared about that. <laughs> oh, man. Well. Why don't you just call yourself Scrotum Hat? <laughs> <laughs> oh, like the thing with the hats. You don't like hats because... You they're... think people's heads look really <laughs> shaped? And then they take them off and it deceives you? What is it? <laughs> Is this really the That's why you don't thing? like hats? <laughs> is that really important to talk about right now? Yeah. The all of the different th- Oh, the the fact that he brings the seventh Actually, toe. Yeah. Yes. Um, can I just assume that you don't have a refrigerator in the back there with random toes? No. Can we agree not to ever talk about this again? <laughs> <laughs> so Which oh, uh, they never will. Oh. Pour one out for Yandu. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Yandu you Dante, you were a uh, a captain among them. Gentleman and a scholar. <laughs> Neither of those things, but I appreciate you anyway. <laughs> He's a man. He was a blue man. <laughs> He's. They look exactly alike. One of them's blue. <laughs> Wait, he's not your father? <laughs> that was that was. So is, that how, is that how we want to close this up with just funny lines that yep. we can remember? I, I always don't do a good job of that after first viewing of the movie. <laughs> so dumb. That's it for this week's Flicks of the Six. Um... Check out SpinTune.com to catch a new episode every Monday and a new article every Thursday. Uh, if you want to keep the conversation going, you can hit us up on Twitter and Facebook at the TheSpinTune or email TheSpinTune at gmail.com. That's S-P-I-N-C-H-O-O-N. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs>